Young Priest Well. I wanted to, to be Ethel Merman. Ethel Merman for me was, you know, balls to the wall. I mean, just. <laughs> if you were on stage with Ethel, you better sing out, Louise, because you're going to have to fight for uh, every moment that you get on that stage. She was louder than I am. Oh, he's a gypsy. I said to Ethel, I never hear you vocalize. She said, I vocalize. Oh, and that was it. That's a vocalization. Ethel was brass. No sh just straight out brass, and I loved her for it. So what was the feeling in New York City about Hollywood in the theater community in the 30s and 40s? Pretty much what it is now. Not real respect for it, but kind of dreaming that it might give them thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars so that they can then, they think, do what they want, but it never works that way. Broadway doesn't particularly like Hollywood, and Hollywood doesn't particularly like Broadway. So I was making 57.50, which was equity minimum in, in Bright Boy, and NMGM was passing out contracts to everybody, but I never cared anything about being in the movies. I never had a dream about becoming a movie star. I never had a dream about Hollywood. Never. I had great fun making the movies, but it isn't working on stage. It was unusual to have a dual personality. Either you were in New York or you were in the movies. There's great competition, the East and the West. There's great com there, there still is competition between the two. I did a bandwagon for MGM with Fred Astaire and Sid Charisse. That was going to be my introduction to the public. But it was about 10 years too late. At that point, all the major studios closed down. The studio system stopped. MGM decided they weren't going to make musicals anymore. And it was a very sad time. People just weren't going to see the movies from the devastation that had happened with television. The variety shows took over. And, and you know, to go to the theater, it was costly. It really happened when Congress uh, decided that there was a monopoly, that the studios could not own, shoot, and distribute their film. And they had most people under contract, so instead of paying stars uh, even a percentage of the picture, you didn't own anything. I don't mean just MGM. All of the studios closed down. Fox, Warner Brothers, Paramount, Columbia, they dropped most all their roster of stars. Fired everybody. Me, <laughs> Fred Astaire, we were all out in the street. The studio system started letting Katherine Hepburn go, can you imagine, and Clark Gable go, and they just didn't keep a roster. MGM kept a few, and I was lucky enough to be one of them. A lot of people, when they uh, left Metro, that had only done movies, that they had, uh, that, that, you know, they had trouble going on with their career.